this ministry has truly gone global. Uh, we are reaching uh, people in just about every nation of the world. Uh, with the exception of some communist nations and other nations which uh, have uh, censorship and totalitarianism. <clears throat> and we don't know how many people we're reaching in those nations because they can't answer us. But we have our own internal tracking systems. And um, I look on the electronic map and I'm, I'm just stunned. And I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful to God because, wow, we... Uh, we're, we're truly uh, reaching <clears throat> the world for Christ. And that's, that's really a miracle of God. Now, in Revelation 13, uh, it says this. Uh, Revelation 13, chapter 1, The beast from the sea. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth was like the mouth of a lion. Now God is giving us a, a, a pictorial description of not only uh, a a a beast, but this beast represents <clears throat> a political authority. And uh, we see this uh, pictorial representation uh, in the book of Daniel, uh, when Daniel uh, interprets King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. We also see this uh, pictorial representation in uh, the book of Revelation. And uh, in the book of Daniel, when uh, Daniel is interpreting King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, um, he's talking about what, what is called uh, the revived Roman Empire, which is the, the fourth great uh, empire uh, that, that the world will see. Now, it says the dragon gave him... Who's the dragon, by the way? Well, the dragon is Satan. Uh, the dragon is Lucifer. So we learn something very, very important here, and that is that in political regimes and uh, among uh, political leaders, uh, this is a, a, an essential truth to grasp, that Lucifer <clears throat> or Satan supernaturally energizes, <clears throat> supernaturally energizes uh, political regimes, political parties, political movements, and political leaders. And um, I've spent, I don't know, decades researching this, and it's important to note because you see uh, a political takeover or a political regime or a political transition is not merely uh, the result of socioeconomic geopolitical forces. That's so important to grasp. You know, you, you hear or watch uh, all these uh, talking heads and radio talk show hosts. And, you know, uh, I understand radio talk show hosts. I was a radio talk show host for 10 years, uh, airing uh, anywhere from three to four hours uh, daily drive time in a live interactive talk show that broadcasted from Los Angeles. It was called the Paul McGuire Show, and it hit every major market in the United States of America. And uh, so I, I understand that, and, and I'm thankful for that because I was able to, co to communicate a great deal of the truth. But you see, political power, uh, economic power, is more than the sum total or the aggregate, if you will, of uh, natural resources, access to oil, uh, military armies, etc., etc., etc. And the one thing that the Bible teaches us is that both God and both Lucifer can give <clears throat> a political leader or regime or nation uh, like the blessing of God, 
uh, empowered the United States of America. And, and the curse of God can bring down a nation. But here we see that the dragon, which is, which is Satan, gave this uh, regime, if you will, a beast rising up out of the sea, uh, having um, ten horns. Now this means, I believe, that this beast is the first beast discussed in the book of Revelation. This beast is the Antichrist. He's the head of a coming uh, ten, uh, a ten form regional global government. So it could be he's the head of the European Union, uh, the North American Union, the African Union, the Asian Union, and so on. But these unions, these political entities, get their energizing force from a supernatural being who is Satan, or more, more specifically, is the dragon. And that's uh, fundamental to understand. Then <clears throat> we read that uh, this dragon uh, is constructed in, in a particular way. And if you flash back, and I do uh, uh, research uh, on this for you in my DVD, are you ready for the coming one world government? Are you ready for the coming one world economic system? Are you ready for the coming one world religion? Uh, and also uh, American dictatorship, the coming event that will change everything, as well as the books. Daniel, acting as a prophet, interprets for Nebuchadnezzar the meaning of this statue. And this statue is a giant statue composed uh, of different materials which tells you that this future one world government will be composed uh, of a variety of compositions. Now one thing we learned that the dragon gave him his power so Satan gave the head of the world system. Remember the Bible calls uh, Lucifer or Satan uh, the head, the temporary head of this coming uh, one world system. And we notice the very interesting feature, and we can't gloss over it. Number one is God gives this um, <clears throat> one world government and its leader authority uh, to rule the whole world. Number two, um, when we look at his throne, we see that his um, deadly wound was healed. Now this implies that there was some kind of assassination, some kind of an attempt to kill the Antichrist, but he miraculously resurrects from the dead, which of course proves to people that he is God. I'm not saying he is God, but people, people make that assumption. And then they say these words. The, the mass population, population of planet Earth says these words. Uh, so they worship the dragon. That means they, 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 they had religious devotion to the dragon. And they worship him as God. And they say these words. Who is like the beast? Who is able to, war, to make war with him? So they understand that there's a vast difference between the first beast, which is the Antichrist, and all the other rulers in the history of mankind, which are the four great uh, Gentile world powers. And they say, uh, so they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, who is the beast? Who is able to make war with them? Now, that's pretty intense. Who is this beast? Who can make war with him? Why is he unique? He's unique because he's the ruler of a one world government. That's never happened before. Now, Adolf Hitler was a type of the Antichrist. Napoleon was a type of the Antichrist. <clears throat> Alexander the Great was a type of the Antichrist. But God did not allow them to conquer the entire world. Now, let's look at another very important feature about this first beast, or this Antichrist, who is a world charismatic uh, political leader. It says, 
he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. That means he had tremendous supernatural charisma. You know, Adolf Hitler uh, had tremendous supernatural charisma. He, he was demonic, demonically anointed, if you will, when he spoke, and he was able to mesmerize people and hold them spellbound when he spoke. And uh, the reason for that was that the Thule Society, which was an occult society, uh, put him into power. And the occult society uh, positioned H Adolf Hitler uh, to, be, to be an antichrist. So this antichrist coming in the future uh, spoke great things and blasphemies. Now, why was the antichrist speaking great things and blasphemies? Well, the main blasphemy he was speaking is that he was claiming to be God, which is the sin of Satan. Remember, in, in, in Genesis, um, God creates a perfect world, a utopia, if you will, uh, for Adam and Eve, who are made rulers of planet Earth. And they are stewards and they are rulers of, of, the, of the earth. Uh, and they're made in the image of God and God gives them uh, his very DNA. Now, that's an important thing to remember. And we get into it in the books. <clears throat> the Day the Dollar Died and Are You Ready for the Microchip and the DVD series American Dic uh, Dictatorship, uh, the coming event that will change everything talking about manufactured crisis and um, uh, the other three DVD series, which is, are you ready for the uh, coming one world government? Are you ready for the coming uh, one world economic system? And are you ready for the coming uh, one world religion? Now, what were these blasphemies that the Antichrist was allowed to speak for 42 months. This is crucial. Well, what's 42 months? 42 months is three and a half years. Now, I take the Bible literally when it comes to chronology or, or, or a time frame. Um, I don't like to argue with people regarding the timing of the tribulation. I think that's irrelevant. Uh, as a good friend of mine said, uh, Pastor Jack Hayford, he said, first bus that comes, I'm out of here. So I'm not going to argue with people over the timing of the rapture. My faith is not going to fall apart uh, if God uh, doesn't rapture me before the tribulation. Uh, I believe there's strong arguments for a rapture uh, before the tribulation, but my faith is in Jesus Christ. My faith is not in a system of eschatology. So when we say that <clears throat> the Antichrist was speaking <clears throat> great uh, blasphemies for 42 months, <clears throat> excuse me, what we're saying is that he's claiming to be God. He's demanding that the world worship uh, worships him for three and a half years. Now, why is the chronology of this three and a half years so essential? <clears throat> 